Hello, long time no talk. I, y'all gonna have to excuse, I got the mom sway to me. Ezra likes it freezing cold in the house when he naps and it's so cold inside. And so I'm outside because it's 76 in November. And then this one's going through developmental leap and all he wants to do is just like contact nap when he does, goes through those and has a fussy face. And he's even just fussy doing that. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be rocking. It has been a minute since I've talked to you guys. I did not plan on taking like three months off the vlog channel, but we got a lot to catch up on, so let's do it. All right, so I don't even know where to start. Last time I think I uploaded a vlog, I was like new postpartum, maybe like a week or so out. I was explaining Sweet Rose's birth story and I feel like everything went great until it didn't. Um, so, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably like see, like saw a little snippet of it. My original plan was to do, I don't know what that noise is. I have no idea what that sound is. Um, my original plan was to do like a full vlog on having my Philippian tubes removed. Um, and it just ended up not being near as like eventful. Not that I like wanted it to be eventful or thought it would be, but like it almost wasn't even like I had surgery. Um, but I made the decision about a year ago uh, prior to even getting pregnant with Roman that after I had my last baby I was going to have my fallopian tubes removed the reason being was because we wanted to just like Sam have a vasectomy and So many people like it never fails People are just like oh my god. I know a vasectomy baby. I had a vasectomy baby blah 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 And we were always like thank you for the encouragement. So we both decided like let's both do something Make sure that we don't have any more babies and I actually talked to my doctor about it and I was like, I think I want my tubes tied. And she was like, well, actually we just take them out now. Um, she was like, there's a reduced rate in ovarian cancer. And before she could even like start to bullet point off like the rest of the reasons why they do it, I was like done, sold, yep, get like, cool. I'm down for that because just cancer does run in my family, not that particular kind. But I also hear that ovarian cancer, I think that's the one that like when you hear of it, it's one that like is very silent. And when most women find out they have it, it's like, stage three or four specifically. So um, when I heard that, I was like, done. Yes, let's do it. Let's, you know, let's, let's get these out. So fortunately I was able to um, schedule the appointment at my six week postpartum checkup. They said, we only require that. If you have a C-section, we can do them during the C-section. But if uh, you don't, then we'll schedule it at your six week postpartum checkup. And then the date really just depends on availability and, and when you're ready. So at my six week checkup, I said, all right, let's do it. And I think it was scheduled for 10 weeks. So I'm gonna insert all the clips for that here. These are both female singers. Do you typically like the female country singers? Who sings it? Uh, oh God. The baby. Ow. Slogging this morning. Sam is so bothered by the fact that I don't know strawberry it's a wine. Good song. So now I have to. I'm being required to go listen to strawberry wine. Um, again, I'm not gonna vlog while we're in there, but I. So I need to be there at 9:15. Not sure what time they'll take us back, but I'm excited. Are you nervous? Um, not not about the surgery itself. I just hope you come out not super sore. Yeah, and not throwing up. It's gonna be a big thing. Don't see. He's not a, a gentle child. Yeah. I don't want you to be all sore and rough and then have to really just keep an eye on him. And Good thing is, get too rowdy. I don't know if I told y'all, we have, I have no lift restrictions and my post op is in two weeks. So this is expected to be a very like minimally invasive, very simple surgery. Um, Look at these headphones. I have talked about these headphones so many times whenever I see them on a deal. I was doing, oh, the sun's crazy. I was doing a, like my prime day video yesterday and um, I was I was sharing those headphones. They're like these bone conducting headphones. So they like are out on the outside of your ear. So you can still hear people when they talk to you. And that's, Sam takes them to work all the time, so. They're really good for um, like talking on the phone while you're driving. You like have a Bluetooth that's in your ear, block some of the sound. I'm these sorry, are really, the lighting's crazy. These Why are a lot better because you can still hear like traffic around. You can hear everything. Like it doesn't block anything. So yeah, but you can still hear what is playing, and it's the quality is great. Okay, I gotta go. We're going in and out of trees, so the lighting is like crazy. Just stand there and let him slip 
open and then make sure where she is. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm trying to think in my head. I think it was like they took me back for surgery just a little after 11. It is 2 p.m. now and I am up. I have never had propofol. I think is how you say it. 12 out of 10. <laughs> Cannot recommend enough because I literally just like went to sleep and I woke up. And my mom has told me that before. She's like, propofol is the coolest thing. Like you, you really, it's just so easy. They did give me something for nausea. A problem is I cannot find, and I, I'm sure enough as I order one, I'll find it. I need um, our heating pad because I can already feel the like gas pain um, from the like, that's honestly one of the worst parts of laparoscopic surgery is whew, that gas pain is just, huh. Um, and the catheter. I forgot they give you a catheter. And I was like, mom, I sat down to use the toilet and I think I jumped up about 10 feet. So honestly, y'all, that was like a doctor's appointment where I just happened to be put to sleep. Like that was the easiest thing I have ever done. I do have a lot of bleeding. Um, they told me if I soak through two pads in an hour to call, um, I, they didn't say how long the bleeding would last but hopefully like by tomorrow i can kind of tell a little bit of a change um but he did have to make three incisions he was going to try and make two so one in my belly button and then one like right above um your like panty line and if they can't see or lift or something then he'll make a third and he did have to make a third because he said that my right fallopian tube was like all kinds of twisted and that's the side that I had my um, ovarian cyst on. And I wonder if that wasn't what it was, but I made both of my boys out of my left side because they like told me at both of my first appointments, they're like, oh, you know, it was your left ovary. So I wonder if that's not why. Um, but yeah, I mean, what, like this is how I, it's two o'clock right now. Oh, I need to go get my watch. It's two o'clock right now. And I feel completely fine. So. Man, propofol for the win. That stuff is golden. I've never, usually I wake up from anesthesia and I am so sick. And the anesthesiologist did give me something for nausea before I even went back. But he was like, what surgeries have you had? And I was telling him, he was like, okay, you probably had anesthesia with those. He was like, we don't do that. We do propofol and our propofol, I think it's with an F. Um, and he was like, so that's, that's a little different. I'd be danged. I feel fine. <laughs> so um, some like a 24 hour lift restriction. And then after that, I don't have a lift restriction, which is great. Um, two weeks post-op and I'll keep y'all updated. But I mean, so far, zero regrets, feeling good. So I'm, I'm very happy with the decision. I told Sam when I woke up, like I looked at him as soon as we got in the car and I was like, it's over. It was such a good decision. Not one, I wondered if I wouldn't like get to the day and be nervous or like be like, oh no, I you know don't know if I should do this. I have zero regrets, zero, and no part of me, not even 1%, a 0.01% felt like this was a bad decision. So I feel really good, very happy with it. Hopefully healing from here on out is. We are 24 hours from surgery, out from surgery, and I feel so good. Lift restrictions are done. I know, like I kind of joke after I had my cyst surgery i was like i know how not to live with my uterus it's okay um with, with your knees and uh so when they told me you know it was only 24 hours i was like okay good so i've been picking up e but you got to be a little careful just with the incision sites but y'all this has been like the easiest process ever if you are even 0.2 percent not sure if you're done having kids don't do it but if you are 100 percent cannot recommend it enough when sam and i were both looking at options to double down and make sure we never had kids um I really thought I was gonna have my tubes tied, but I've actually heard so many stories. Now they're discovering that tubes are coming untied and vasectomies fail and all that stuff. So it's just like good that I had, you know, definitely it's not ever gonna have, I'm never gonna have any more babies. Um, and for the process to be so easy has been a huge blessing with two kids and being nine weeks postpartum. I wasn't sure how those things were gonna combine. So I'll show you from afar and then I'll show you a close up. Still really bloated. Those are my stretch marks from row. But just from afar, you can really just see this line. What, baby? What? Here. 
Okay, so now that he's happy-ish. So you can see it there. I've just got like little stretch marks from Row. Those are fading so much because of this stretch mark cream. It takes some time to work, but dang, they are they are so much lighter now than they were when I first had him. Um, and then you can kind of see from afar. So like, just to show you guys from afar, that's how they look. Not super noticeable. And then up close, you can see like it's pretty dark. And then that's the other incision. And then of course, just stretch marks from Baby Row. So um, definitely gonna have to hold off on the stretch mark cream for, you know, until those incisions heal because it does get really hot. Um, but that's part of what like promotes the healing of it. But I do have to say, if you have stretch marks, I have been floored with how much lighter. I noticed it was like really after I'd been using it for six weeks consistently. Oh my gosh. It's really good, so um, definitely recommend that. But hopefully the incisions will heal very quickly and smooth. Um, yeah, so that's I think gonna be the final update for this. I'll update you maybe after my like two week post-op, but with as good as I feel, I just don't feel like it's necessary to like check in tomorrow and the day after because it's gonna be probably even easier. So surgery was super easy, very successful, and I just genuinely thought it was gonna be like a lot more. On a scale of one to 10, pain was a two. Never took um, pain meds, never took nausea meds. Woke up from surgery feeling fine. Walked out of the surgery center, took like an hour max. Um, healing was just like I had lift restrictions for 24 hours and then that was it. I went back at two weeks, they checked my incisions and that was that. Was that. Um, I had read, and I don't really know why, but I had read that if you have to have your fallopian tubes removed in an emergency surgery, it's like a six week downtime versus if you have them taken out voluntarily, it's only two weeks. And that was exactly what happened with my doctor. So I'm not sure why other than just like other things that your body's going through, but you guys, it was the easiest surgery ever. And I'm so happy that I did it. One week prior to having my fallopian tubes removed, that's kind of when everything changed. And the reason that I want to share, it's like it happened before, for is because I don't want anyone to think that what I'm about to say was because I had my Philippian tubes removed. So at nine weeks postpartum, literally like one week to the day before I had them removed, I got my period back. And if you guys were here during Ezra's postpartum phase, you know I got my period back at nine weeks postpartum with him too. And I've actually discovered it really is a curse that your body tries to like go back to normal that early after you've had a baby. Um, Leading up to my period, I could not figure out why I just all of a sudden hated everyone and everything and was this miserable person to be around and why I was so moody. And when my period started, I was like, okay, like that's why. And it was like severe PMS on steroids. Period came and went. It was an okay period, nothing out of the ordinary. But the symptoms of like just hating everyone and everything didn't go away. And I noticed that like your supply takes a dip during your period. It was like I went from being an overproducer to a just enougher. And that was kind of weird. So like after the period was over. Um, Cause I was up to that point an overproducer and I had been like saving all the breast milk. So I went from being an overproducer to a just enougher. And again, I was just this monster. Like my mood just did not go back. Had my fallopian tubes removed. And then, you know, I'm thinking, okay, like I'm healing, it's good. Um, I actually ended up having a 28 day cycle and the next period was super easy. However, from day one of that first period at nine weeks postpartum to day one of the next period, I cannot explain it. It was like every week, like clockwork, my mood just did like this and it was just the worst ever. And with my mood went my milk supply and I did everything. And I had people on Instagram trying to share tips and like I promise there's literally nothing, not one thing that I have tried that worked. And I don't, I don't want any more tips. I don't want to be connected with a lactation consultant. I don't, I don't want any of that because it still makes me upset when I say it. Like it just was not what I expected was that my milk supply was just gonna disappear. 
and I think it was just like my hormones were trying to make milk, but then I had these other hormones trying to balance out. And there is so much that's involved in your hormones and making breast milk and people either don't know that or like pretend it's not like real, but I think it's specifically like your prolactin levels. I think that's the one. Like my body wanted to do normal things, but it was trying to make breast milk. And unfortunately my hormones that just wanted my body to go back to normal, they fought and they won. So my breast milk supply just diminished and I went from being an overproducer to a just enough offer to an underproducer to producing nothing in a matter of like five weeks. And it all started when I got my period. So, so I just like want to make sure if I'm sharing this with you in regards to the fallopian tubes, because that's what so many people on Instagram asked. They were like, do you think that had anything to do with it? I don't because I noticed that first dip then, but I don't think I really let on, on Instagram how bad my mood was during those five weeks. So when your hormones are fighting each other, it wasn't just the milk. I, it took a very long time to finally look in the mirror and admit that like I was really in a dark place with postpartum depression and I didn't even know it was a thing, postpartum rage. So finally I looked at myself in the mirror one day and I was like, we can't keep doing this. Like people were like, oh, your husband just needs to be understanding, keep offering, like, you know, this and that. And I just like, I could, I can't do it just so that I can say I'm breastfeeding. Like I can't treat people like absolute shit the way I was. I was a rage monster. I was up and down. The slightest thing would just send me off the edge. Like I was screaming at everyone. I wasn't a, the, the best mother for my kids. And I just was like a nightmare to be around. I wasn't making enough milk. My body was still trying. And so I just finally was like, I have to call it. Like breastfeeding is making it. And I think that was actually adding to the anxiety was like knowing that I wasn't making enough for Roman and being worried about that. So, and I've always thought that fed is best. Like I've never been like breast is best because, and I swear to God, if someone says that in the comment section, I will erase it. I will block you. Like we are not here to shame mothers for how they feed their kids. It just was not what I expected because I had such a good breastfeeding journey with Ezra until he decided he was done and he kind of self weaned and just pulled back and was like, I'm over this versus Roman who wanted to eat. And there was just nothing I was giving him. So finally, I had a weekend where I really went to a dark place and my, my like mentally, I just, I told Sam, I was like, this is bad. Like, this is the worst I've ever felt in my life. And we decided that it would just be best if I weaned. So um, thankfully I have worked so hard to build a freezer stash. I'm thinking Roman will get breast milk until he's like eight months old. Probably at least six or seven. I wouldn't be surprised if it went to eight months though. Um, and we just worked so hard. I mean, I worked so hard at saving all that. So finally we started the weaning process. Roman did not do good um, with it because again, he was like, very much so did not want to quit. So that even made me feel like horrible mom. It was tough. He weaned fine eventually. It just took a little bit longer versus Ezra who had no problems. And let's see, it's been like a week, I think at this point since I breastfed. And I cannot tell you, it was two days ago. I looked in the mirror and for the first time I recognized myself. So if you are going through something, I'm keeping an eye on Doug because he he, uh, he he sees the delivery drivers here. If you're going through something, like please tell someone because I feel like once I, I just finally blurted it out that I was going through something mentally, someone told me on Instagram, they said, when you talk about it, it takes away a lot of its power. And I feel like when I talked about it, I was able to just finally admit to myself what was going on. And I was able to then take the steps to like get better. And you know, breastfeeding isn't gonna cause this with everybody. It's also not gonna fix fix it with everybody. I don't wanna use the term fix, but like I can't explain it to you, but something about my milk supply and my period, just like at nine weeks postpartum, I thought I was in the clear and I was not. And I got postpartum depression out of, at, like it slapped me like a ton of bricks. And it was the worst, like darkest time of my life and I'm on the other side of it now like I'm coming out of it I feel like my mood every week that goes by is like I'm just going back up and I'm feeling a lot better and a lot more like myself but like 
but it was so scary and I just didn't, I had no idea that, that could even be a thing. So that's kind of why I've just like taken a break because it's just been so, so tough to like go through this and feel like you're doing it alone and there's nothing that you can do to help and you're a horrible mom even though I know I'm not a bad mom and I would never think someone else is a bad mom. So it's just been a really tough like postpartum experience this time. And I still obviously by the tears I'm carrying a lot of guilt because I like wanted so badly to breastfeed for as long as I did with Ezra, like my goal was six months. And he'll still get breast milk to six months, but it was just not like I don't get to feed him and it was just not what I wanted. Like we didn't get to make the decision. It was like my body just made it for me. So I don't know why, but something about getting my period back this time, I think it was just like my body was spent, my body was done. I had, um, from the time I, I stopped breastfeeding, November 2nd, 2022, and I found out I was pregnant December 1st, 2022. So my body just didn't have time to ever do its thing. And I think that's why this happened this time. It's just like my hormones were just like doop, 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 doop. And then I finished breastfeeding and I had this huge hormone drop and then I got pregnant and they went back to making a baby and it was just like, my body just couldn't do it. So yeah, that's kind of where I've been, what we've been going through, what's been going on. Um, if you're going through something, please tell someone because those 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 thoughts get dark and it's it's bad. At least what I had gone through, it was bad. And I thank God have incredible friends and the most loving and supportive patient husband who was as patient with me as a, he deserves like a medal because that was I was a monster to him specifically. I don't know why, but he was just the one that got it. And I have parents that can, you know, buff, like I have this village and I know that so many people don't have that village, but I'm feeling so much better. Like it was, like I said, two days ago, I looked in the mirror and it was like for the first time I was like, hi, nice to see you again. Like it, that really is how it felt. Like I looked in the mirror and I just saw me. So I didn't, I just didn't expect it to go this way. Look at this kid's okay. fault, but. <laughs> I just never expected it to go this way. So, well got me tore up from the floor up. I told him, I was like, man, I didn't get stretch marks with Ezra. I got him with you. <laughs> I uh, I was very active during pregnancy with Ezra. I couldn't be with you. I had a great postpartum experience with Ezra, not with you. <laughs> and it's just so indicative of like who he is as a person because he, it looks exactly like Ezra in the face, but everything else about him is different. Everything about the pregnancy was different. Everything about just like, him is different, he's so calm, he's my mama's boy. Uh, like he is way more obsessed with me than Ezra ever was. Um, he is just like the, the most incredible little personality. He is the perfect puzzle piece that fit in with our little family. So I feel good to be on the other side of it because it was, it was not fun there for a while. So I'm, I'm ready to get back to vlogging. I'm ready to come back and show you guys this absolutely incredible addition to our family and how much we love him and i do just want to say if you are considering having your fallopian tubes removed if even 0.1 percent of you thinks you're not done having kids don't do it but i tell sam at least once a week i'm so happy i did it because you don't realize when you are a woman who is getting your period regularly how much you think about either oh my gosh am i pregnant or Oh my gosh, am I pregnant? Like even on birth control, like I got an ovarian cyst in college and when they went in to remove the cyst and I had been on birth control, like I had been on birth control for years at that point, when they went in to remove the cyst, they're like, oh, she ovulated. Like ovulated that month. And so it's just like, there are times that it happens and I just never realized like in the back of my mind how much I thought about it. And now just getting to enjoy my children and know that there's not this like, I have either to be on birth control because God knows I have now suck at remembering to take daily medication <laughs> or like not being on it and then having to track your cycle. Like, I don't know. I just never realized how much of it controlled my life. Um, and maybe that's just me, but it's amazing. And if anything, I actually feel like my period was a little bit better the second time, like after I had my Philippian tubes removed, um, it was a lot shorter. It was a very heavy period on like the middle, but like the lead up to it, I feel like 
before like my period was like five or six days and I would have like a day of spotting a couple heavy days and then like you know two or three more days of spotting and this one it was like spotting heavy spotting done and it was just amazing so yeah what I originally thought was gonna be this vlog about like my fallopian tubes just there wasn't really much to it and there, there's been all this other stuff so I'm just rambling but I just want to tell y'all that that's where we've been we're doing great Ezra is the most incredible big brother I have ever in my life seen and I wish that so badly I would have vlogged but at the same time I just wasn't in the place to because at first Ezra wanted to play with Roman like I brought him home and he's like friend oh my god and Roman was just like a blob like he didn't do anything and so I was just like all right fine cool and he just kind of moved on from it wasn't really interested he kind of just not ignored Roman but he just like was like okay there he is you know and now Roman's like woken up and he's three months old and he sees Ezra and he smiles at him and I feel like now as we're starting to like walk over and try to play with Ro and he'll like he shows him how to do things and it's it's really precious so um we're gonna we're gonna get back to the positive happiness that I'm starting to feel again and you guys are gonna get to see like the best the best part because like i've just been in this like i just feel so happy that we have these two little boys so yeah if you're going through it mama i am i hear you and it is a monster and one that for some reason i just never thought would be me and when i you know was six seven weeks postpartum still experiencing just bliss i i just I don't know, I never even knew it could hit you the way it hit me at nine weeks and I didn't think it could be like that. So, mm, rambling, but just wanna tell you guys, feeling better, feeling good. Loving this cute little man who I'm pretty sure was in the same route last time you guys saw him doing this exact thing. Uh, but we'll be back soon. And thank y'all for watching. No more tears. I'm done feeling the mom guilt. We're releasing that today.